question from a Storyline user today who is asking about creating an exercise with hotspots and branching. But here was his situation. He wanted to show an image and he wanted learners to be able to select multiple areas of that image. And then based on whether they pick the right things, he wanted to branch them to some different content. Kind of like the slide that we see here. Learners can click to select or deselect some items here. And in this case, the correct answer is these first three stacks of crates. And then when they hit submit, they get some feedback, right? And then if they hit the continue button, then we branch them to someplace else in the course, depending on how they answered. Now for something like this, I actually didn't use a hotspot question because by design, hotspot questions have just one correct hotspot. So what I did instead is create a free form pick many question, and I'll show you how I did it. So what I have here is the slide with my picture on it. This is gonna become my question slide. And over here in the left column, you can see that I've got a couple other slides that I've created, and these would represent whatever additional content paths the learner would see based on how they answer. So I'm going to branch them to slide 2.2 if they answer correctly, and 2.3 if they don't. So to make this into a pick many question, what I'm going to do first is come up to the Insert Shapes tool, and I'm going to select Freeform Shape, and I'm just going to draw um, a shape around each of the items that I want to be clickable. In this case, it's going to be each of these four um, stacks of crates. And this doesn't have to be super precision here, but I just want to get all the way around. So there's my first shape, and you can give me just a second here while I create the other three. Alrighty, so here's all four shapes. They're all in place now. And what I wanted to show you is down here in the timeline, I did name each of those shapes that I just drew. You can double click in the column here and give it a custom name, and that just makes it easier to select the right items later when you identify the answer choices. So what I'm going to do here now is fix the look of these. I'm going to shift click all four shapes because I don't want these to be blue. Um, I want them to actually be invisible. So up on the format tab, I'm going to click in the corner of the shape styles menu to bring up the format shape dialog. And then I'm going to change the transparency to 100%. And for line color, I'm going to choose no line. And that way they're going to be invisible. Um, and I'm also going to create a selected state on each of these shapes because that's what's going to help the learner see what they've selected if they do click on any of these. So I'm going to first select the one that's over the green stack, and then I'm going to open up the panel below my slide here and go to my states pane. Click edit states. We're going to create a new state, and that new state is going to be the selected state. Then we'll click add, and now we get to say what we want that selected state to look like. So up here in the format tab, I'm going to just uh, choose a blue fill and a blue outline, but I'm also going to click in this corner here to open up that format shape dialog again because I want to change the transparency and just bump that up a little bit so that learners can still see um, the stack of crates behind the shape. So we'll make that about 75%. And that one's done. And now that we've done one of them, we can use the format painter on the home tab to copy that same change to the other shapes. So I've got my green one selected here. I'm going to double click the format painter and then click this one, this one, and this one, all three of the other shapes, and then turn my format painter off. And you can see that the selected state got applied to each of those. So now the only thing left here is to convert this into a pick many question. And to do that, we're going to come up to the insert tab, choose convert to free form, and then choose pick many, which is going to be just like a multiple response, basically. And that's going to bring up this dialog here where we can identify the choices. So in this column, we can just go through here. And you can see that red outline is helping me. But I've also named these items. So that's very helpful, too. So we'll choose the green. Um, where's my orange one? There's the orange one. Um, the yellow stack is right there. And then the red one is right there. And the correct answers would be those first three. Now, if we also want to do that branching thing, we can come down here to the bottom. And for the correct and incorrect items, um, the feedback items, we can click on the More button and then set the branching. So for the correct answer, I'm going to branch the learner to slide 2.2 and then click OK. And then we'll click the More button for the incorrect feedback and set the branching to slide 2.3 and then click OK. And now when we click Save and Close, um, we should be done. So now, oops, I didn't mean to do that. So now you can see the um, feedback layers are created here for us in the lower right. And now if we preview this scene, it should act just like the sample that we saw earlier. So here's our selection. We can click any of these and have answered incorrectly here. So we'll hit submit. It says we didn't answer the correct answer. And then we'll continue on and it'll branch us to a different place. So that's how you can create a free form pick many question.